Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about healthcare topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Hello, welcome to today's presentation, HPV Vaccine, When and Why, presented by Dr. Sudipthi Prasad, OBGYN with Washington Township Medical Foundation. Dr. Prasad's clinical interests include minimally invasive surgery and menopausal healthcare issues. Whether delivering babies or providing routine gynecologic care, her goal is to help women be healthy during all phases of life. She is a firm believer in patient education and shared decision making in healthcare. Her greatest source of professional satisfaction is the personal connection with her patients as they share the milestones of their lives, adolescence, childbirth, midlife, and menopause. Please welcome Dr. Prasad. Hi, I'm Dr. Prasad. Thank you for being here today. We're going to talk about um, HPV, which is a human papilloma virus, and also the HPV vaccine. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States. About 80% of sexually active women will get it at some point in their lifetime, at least one type of HPV. It can infect anyone regardless of their sex, gender identity, or sexual orientation through different um, routes of spread. Many women do not know they have HPV because they usually don't have any symptoms and usually goes away on its own. Most HPV infections do not cause cancer illness, and most of them resolve by themselves because your immune system works to take care of it. Some types of HPV can cause illness, such as genital warts or cervical cancer, and there is a vaccine to help you prevent HPV. HPV is a group of more than 200 related viruses, and they spread through either vaginal, anal, or oral sex. Sexually transmitted HPV types fall into two groups. They're either the low risk or the high risk. Low risk ones usually cause no diseases, but um, they could cause, few low risk ones could cause um, genital warts, specifically type 6 and 11. High risk HPVs can cause several types of cancer. And if when you see your pap smear report and if a HPV test is done, you'll see all these different numbers. There are 14 high risk HPV types. 16 and 18 are the most aggressive kind, which cause invasive cancer. HPV 16 and 18 are responsible for about 70% of cervical cancers and precancerous lesions. Um, HPV 16 and 18 are frequently associated with invasive cervical cancer um, than the other types. And the vaccine, which is available in the market right now, specifically targets these two strains. How is HPV transmitted? The infection passes easily between sexual partners. It could be through intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact, um, depending on the kind of sexual practices you have, even use of sex toys or other objects. Condoms and dental dams can lower the chance of HPV, but they do not prevent it completely. This is an important slide. I put it up here just to show you that HPV does not just cause cervical cancer. It also causes oral cancer, vaginal cancer, anal cancer, vulvar cancer, and penile cancer. And cervical cancer is still among the top 10 um, causes of death in the United States. There are about 14,000 new cases every year. And virtually all cervical cancers are caused by HPV. Um, routine screening can prevent most cervical cancers. Um, as a result, cervical cancer incidence rates in the United States are decreasing. This slide is pretty powerful. No women should ever die of cervical cancer just because we have a vaccine and we have routine screening tests. The missed opportunities, um, I want you to focus on seven out of 10 women who were not screened, had a regular doctor and health insurance which means there was no reason not to be screened. But still, a um, lot of women do not go to the gynecologist routinely. But we are definitely getting better because your primary care doctor always reminds you to go. Or if they do a vaginal exam or a cervical um, cancer screening, 
that's perfect, then you can go ahead with your primary care doctor too. Impact of HPV vaccine, since it was introduced in 2006, you can see a huge decrease in the HPV 16 and 18 infections, genital warts, and cervical lesions. <clears throat> On this slide, I want you to look at um, the last line. If everyone is screened regularly, 83% of cervical cancers could be prevented. Um, it's specifically women 35 to 65 because we see majority of the cancers during that age group. Other cancers are oropharyngeal cancers, which we, saw in, um, which we saw in the previous slide. And most develop in the throat, usually the tonsils, back of the tongue, usually caused by HPV. Anal cancer, more than 90% of anal cancers are caused by HPV. Vaginal cancer, 75%. Vulvar, 70%. Penile cancer is about 60%. So high-risk HPV has caused 3% of all cancers in women and 2% in men. And each year, there's still about 45,000 new cases of cancer in parts of the body where HPV is often found. And it's estimated to cause about 36,000 of these, according to CDC. So worldwide, still 5% of all cancers, and it's estimated that 5, 70,000 women and 60,000 men still getting HPV-related cancers each year. And cervical cancer is still among the most common cancers and leading cause of cancer-related deaths in low- and middle-income countries. Why? Because screening is not readily available. When it is available, use it. Screening for HPV and cell changes caused by HPV. So screening tests are used to check for disease when there are no symptoms. So which means you do not know you have HPV unless you're tested. The goal of screening for cervical cancer is to find precancerous cell lesions at an early stage before they become cancer, and when treatment can prevent cancer from developing. So cervical cancer screening, what exactly does it involve and who needs to get it? All people who have cervix, which means women, transgender men who still have a cervix. And cervical cancer is the only HPV-caused cancer for which FDA-approved screening tests are available. So when do you start the screening? Cervical cancer screening starts at age 21, not before that because the guidelines have changed over the last 10 years. And pap smear checks for any, scale, any cell changes at all. And there's something called co-testing, which means pap smear plus HPV is done starting at age 30. So if it's not done for some reason, when you see a primary care doctor, your gynecologist, which is routinely done, if not, you know to keep track of it and ask questions. Um, so the HPV co-testing starts at age 30. Screening for other HPV-related cancers. So there are no FDA-approved tests to detect HPV or HPV-caused cell changes um, in any other tissues, like anal, vulvar, vaginal, penile, or oropharyngeal tissues. Um, and this is the most common question. When a patient is diagnosed with HPV and they want the partner to be tested, but we don't have any FDA-approved tests. Sometimes it is done in, in high-risk patients like um, HIV-positive men, which are anal pap smears. And also dentists, make sure you go in for your routine dental screening, which is every six months, or just see a hygienist. So that way, if they notice something, any changes, they can um, bring it to your attention. So what are the treatments for cell changes? Now that you've had screening and you notice some cell changes, um, if your HPV test is positive, there are procedures which can be done, or just follow up, whatever it entails. And loop electrosurgical excision procedures, removal of the um, abnormal cells. Cold knife colonization is just a bigger um, piece of your cervix which is removed. And laser therapy, which is less commonly used now, um, Cryotherapy or the liquid nitrogen, it's used to freeze the um, abnormal tissue. Total hysterectomy, only if it's like carcinoma in situ, which is a cancer which is not spread beyond the uterus. How does HPV cause cancer? Like any other um, cancer, once high-risk HPV infects cells, it interferes in the way which the cells communicate with each other, causing infected cells to multiply in an uncontrolled manner. These infected cells are usually recognized, controlled by your immune system. And I want you to focus on the last two lines, it takes more than 10 years or even longer for HPV-infected cervical cells to cause cancer. So it's not like you're infected with HPV now and you have cancer in like six months. It's very rare, unless you've had HPV for a while and we did not pick it up or you did not have screening for some reason. 
So that's a HPV infected cell. You see the other normal cells with the um, nice normal nucleus and cytoplasm, but this one is, it's something called vacuolization, that's what it's called. Um, though it looks like a cute owl in there, it's an abnormal um, cervical um, HPV infected cell. What can you do to prevent it? So positive high-risk HPV, make sure you get diagnostic testing called colposcopy. Colposcopy is nothing but taking a look at your cervix under a microscope and see if there's any abnormal cells, take some biopsies um, to see if it needs more attention. Quitting smoking, I especially put this in here because smoking is a direct risk factor for cervical cancer. Have a, having a weakened immune system increases your risk. If you're on steroids for long-term steroids, any kind of autoimmune disorders, HIV positive. So regular screening is recommended. And HPV vaccine definitely prevents it. So HPV vaccine was introduced in 2006. Um, the goal was to prevent HPV infection. The currently available one in the market, Gardasil 9, protects against infection from nine different types of HPVs. Remember those numbers in the other slide? The two low risk ones are six and 11, causing most genital warts, and then seven high risk types, where 16 and 18 were the more, most aggressive kind, and then 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58 are also the routine high risk ones which are tested. So if your HPV test is positive, your um, gynecologist will do something called a reflex HPV, where they test specifically for 16 and 18. So that's what you will see for reflex testing, and then your um, treatment is based off of that. HPV-related cancers, other cancers um, apart from the cervix, vulvar, vaginal, and anal cancers. So vaccine is prevention, um, which means it does not treat, does not cure an infection once you have it. But if your HPV 16 is positive, 18 is negative, then have a conversation with your gynecologist so you could still get the vaccine if you have not been vaccinated. <clears throat> Who should get the HPV vaccine? HPV vaccine series is recommended for girls and boys. It can start at age nine. Most pediatricians pick age 11 or 12. It is important for adult males as well as females to get vaccinated because both men and women can develop HPV-related cancers. So this is the age schedule, so which means age nine to 45. So nine to 14, before the 15th birthday, you can get two doses, which is what most um, pediatricians give the kids. Zero, six to 12. So what that means is today, and then six months from now, or within that um, six to 12 month period. And then 15 to 45, it's a three dose series. So you get it today, again, in one to two months, and then six months. Your um, gynecologist's office will automatically schedule your appointments or your pediatrician's office to make sure that you stay on the schedule. Say if you miss a dose for some reason, so you do not need to restart the series. So this is an important slide. Um, so it basically talks about just the myth busting the HPV vaccine. HPV isn't that common. Now you know it is, right? After listening to the doc, more than 80% will be exposed to HPV at some point in their lives. HPV only causes cervical cancer. That's not true, right? It causes vulvar, vaginal, anal, head and neck cancers. HPV vaccine is ineffective, can prevent most HPV-related cancers. Is, um, the vaccine is just for women. You know that's not true. Age 9 to 45 for men and women. You only need the HPV vaccine if you're sexually active. Just because you are not sexually active now does not mean you'll never have sex, right? Getting the vaccine protects you for life. Take home message, HPV infection is common. It can in infect anyone, has no symptoms. Most HPV infections don't cause cancer. Most of them resolve on their own. High risk HPV infections that persist can cause cancer. Get screened for HPV because it's available. There are a lot of um, women in the world who do not have this available. HPV vaccination can prevent cancer. I thought that was a nice slide to include. <laughs> and then I'll take any questions you have. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. We do have some questions. The first question we have is, why are parents sometimes reluctant to vaccinate their children with the HPV vaccine? That was the case initially when, um, in 2006, when the vaccine was introduced. Mostly, um, 
the parents and the caregivers were of the notion that we are actually promoting sexual promiscuity or actually supporting sexual activity in, um, in teens. Whereas we know that's not the case, and now we are far from it now. There are some states which actually mandate HPV vaccine now. Okay, uh, the next question we have is, if you were vaccinated in 2006 and only received protection against two types of HPV, uh, should I consider getting vaccinated again? If you got two doses, if so your pediatrician gave you the vaccine and it was before your age 15, your third shot can be the Gardasil 9. But if you got after 15, after age 15, we do not recommend you to get vaccinated again. Okay. Um, the third question I have, or we have here is, you explained that HPV is a virus that can cause certain cancers. How can I find out if I have HPV? Get screened, get screened, get screened. So if you, if you're 21 and above, and if you've never had your pap smear, so either call your primary care, gynecologist, wherever you live, whatever is available for you, get screened for your um, pap smear and HPV. Okay, and I do have one last question from the audience, yes. and it is, are there any side effects to this vaccine? Mostly, no. So the most common side effect is injection site pain. And we usually have patients wait in the clinic for about um, 15 minutes after the injection. Um, and there is, an, in the studies, there's an anecdotal um, GBS, which is Guillain-Barre syndrome, um, but we have not actually seen it. Perfect. Thank you for answering all those questions. And this does conclude our program. Thank you, Dr. Prasad, for this insightful presentation and important reminder regarding how important the HPV vaccine is. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's presentation will be available on our Facebook page and YouTube.